Hey guys, for this trek into DIY tech, we're going to look at the uh, Radio Master T TX-12. Uh, so what we're going to do is, um, you see how this stick is spring-loaded up and down? So on here, the throttle, and this, you, and you guys know if you, uh, if you do RC at all, um, this is a question sometimes that comes up. The left stick, which is where I keep the throttle, um, different modes, uh, you have the throttle in different pla different places. But um, for my purposes, I fly uh, quads, and I keep the th I like the throttle to center itself. And so I'm going to show you how to how to uh, change that from from this to. Uh, what you see on the other stick, which is the uh, spring load in there. Um, yeah, here we go. As I said, this is a uh, TX-12. This is a new one. This is a Mark II um, uh, Open TX Mark II. So the firmware is a little bit different on this one. But this is really cool because this one is a more compact version of the one that I usually use which is the uh, TX-16, so I'm usually running the TX-16, and uh, Open TX is really nice, uh, and I've been using this one for a while, uh, for work and, and stuff, and some of the projects that I have here on the channel, but I um, recently got this one for uh, sending off to one of our clients and uh it's just it's just beautiful it fits really nice in the hand and everything but like i said we normally normally i have the drones um uh that i work on i have it so that when the th throttle centers they go to a hover right so that way as i'm watching the drone i don't have to look i can let this go and it'll It'll go to that spot, and then I have the um, the trim set up, as well as the the parameters in the drone, so that the drone can hover when it when it hits that spot. But by default, um, and it works perfectly well for most models. Um, by default, um, the throttle side and the mode that we that we use, you have one mode one and mode two, which uh, does different things with the sticks, right? So you have your yaw pitch roll um, and um, your throttle. And here, what we're going to do is we're going to make it like this one. See, see, this one centers, and this one um, doesn't center on its own. So we're going to fix that. Uh, another pro tip: um, it, you guys, veterans that are uh, RC veterans, will already know this. But if you're just getting into RC, um, when the radio comes, right, the antenna is not installed. Do not power your radio um, without, don't turn your radio on without putting the antenna in there. Because it can damage the radio in certain, under certain conditions. Um, so, here we go. I'm just going to show you guys what we're going to go to next. Um and always remember, uh, anything that I'm showing you here is for your information. Um, cannot make any claims as to how it's going to work for you uh, and so forth. And if you damage your radio, I can't help you. This may void your warranty. Be careful with this sticker here. This will want to come off when you open this shell. So <laughs> here we go. And again, when you flip this over, be careful. Your sticks are there. So, um, you can always, uh, um, you can always get replacements as you can see the, the parts and components, uh, move. This is actually to raise and lower the, the position of these sticks in case you're, you are a pincher or your th your thumbs wind up at higher or lower but I'm just gonna flip that over 
just remember not to apply too much pressure, downward pressure, when you have this flipped over or put something here as a spacer. You can use something like this and land it right here. Um, we're going to go without that for the sake of you can see better. So you're going to need a screwdriver. You're going to need a fairly long screwdriver at that. It's a Phillips. So I have this one here. This one's pretty cool. It has a hex on one side, Phillips on the other. You're not gonna need be a, you're not gonna need to remove uh, this little door. This is for our module, extra RF module that gives us different. Uh, we're not gonna get into that. That's a whole nother video unto itself. But what you will have to remove is these guys here, and so, um, and uh, you know what? I'm gonna show you the the slightly better way to do that. We have six screws that we're going to remove, or we're gonna, yeah, we can just take take them straight out. Make sure you have somewhere to deposit those that will not escape you. Three, four, five, one more. And six. So, really cool trick that I use sometimes is get you a some tape. And this is some of that easy tear tape. Uh, it's got little striations on it. You can find this in uh, uh, Auto Body or uh, Auto Stores, and it's usually used to mask things off for painting. But you can use it like so, and it will hold your screws for you. Ta da! All right, next thing you do is we're going to open the battery door. Okay, we got the battery door opened. This, uh, like I said, you won't have to remove this. There are no screws in there. And so what you're going to do is you're going to part this a little bit, like so. And what that's going to do is it's going to allow you to get your, get your thumbnail under there and pop that out. So now remember where these came from. One is marked F and one is marked E. So, again, same thing on this side. Get your thumbnail under there, and it'll pop out. Uh, so you can see there, it's just it's just a little tab that holds that in. Be careful uh, not to break the tab. So, again, you're going to pull up on the back side here. Get your nail under there, and it'll it'll pop out. Now, this should just lift straight out. Be careful again there are some pins on this side so if you're nervous about that then do open this so that you can see when the pins come out so you can see there pins are right there and you don't want to mess that up because if you want to use in a an RF module later to expand your radio radios capabilities um, you don't want to damage that so pull this straight out Put that aside, and now what you're going to see, you're going to see, there's the light. Um, so what you're going to see is the other side, the, and this is the side, um, and again, be careful not to touch any of the components in there, RF components, you don't want to mess with the magic. So you can see this is the spring-loaded side. What does that is this mechanism here. So you can see there that there is a spring that actuates. Okay, so on this side, this is the same mechanism, uh, only flipped over 
180. So they flip it over 180 and um, same joystick, but as you can see, the wires come this way on this one, wires come this way on this one. It's just the same mechanism flipped over and it's processed through here and it takes care of all that flipping and stuff. But you can see down here, there is a screw there and that screw is keeping this spring from contacting this mechanism. So what you're going to do is, and it helps here to have a magnetized screwdriver like I have here. Um, it doesn't always help to have a magnetized screwdriver, but in this case, it does. And so I'll try to get that in focus there. But you can see we're going to unscrew that screw and the spring will start pulling that lever up. At some point, it's gonna, that lever is going to pop up. Be careful because that will try to... So I don't know if you saw that, but you can see there the lever is 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 free. So um, we'll have to take this screw completely out of here because what's going to happen is if you leave it in there and now you can put this in a safe place, you can tape it inside your battery compartment or whatever you need to do, but um, do not put it back in there. Okay. And I'm going to show you why. Uh, now that the lever is loose, right? You still don't want to put it back in there because what's going to happen is when this goes back down it will contact the top of that screw and you will not have a full range of movement here so although you're tempted to put the screw back in there now that this lever is loose um, it will contact the top of that screw and you will not have full range of motion here which is your throttle right so you 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 kind of want to have your full range of motion All right Again, uh, none of these instructions are, um, you know, anything that the manufacturer is put, uh, putting out. This is from my experience working with these radios and what I've done in the past. And most of these radios have the same type of mechanism. So you, you'll probably find that same, that same arrangement in a, in a wide range of radios. Uh, it works well. So everybody, Everybody uses it just about. All right. So now that that is you've you've tested it to see that it does actually do what you want it to do. Uh, now you're ready to put everything back together. So there's another thing here that we're not going to touch today, which is the adjustment, um, the tension adjustment on these axes. You can tighten and loosen this screw. Well, it's, it's completely loose at this point, but you can tighten this and make it so that there is, this is, is harder and easier to move. I'm going to leave it at the default. Um, and so that's, that's going to make these two sides, um, feel the same as you're moving them up and down, which is, is for me is okay. Everybody has different their different uh, preferences but again as you get more experience uh, as you get more experience you'll you'll know what type of feel you want to have and so now again keeping track of where the the pins are drop this back straight down and also when you do that I always keep in mind not to catch the label under here like so right <laughs> you want to have the label on the outside as you put this back together and look at that looks like nobody's been in there <laughs> i know i know that's terrible um so we're going to drop the screws in there and i'm going to show you a trick to uh, allow you not to strip the screws as you as you screw them back in or uh, actually not to drive the screws in and create new threads on top of the old threads because this is metal going into plastic, right? So you don't want to re-thread the plastic because over time that makes it so that the, the threads are uh, don't work as well and you can strip the, strip the threads and your screws will be in 
doing no good in there. So what you want to do is you want to turn the screw in the loosening direction until, until you hear a click like that. When you hear a click like that, that means that it has found the beginning of the thread. And then you drive it in. Okay, so I'm going to do that again. So I'm going to back out until I hear that, and then I drive it in. And so that ensures that you are driving the screw into the same thread that it came out of and preserve your, um, preserve the original thread so that you don't strip out that screw hole over time. Uh, now this is the thing. You're not going to be getting into the, into the radio to do anything like this. You know, once you set, once you set the springs for your your uh, joysticks you're probably not going to get in there again so it's but uh, in other cases when you do have plastic cases that you're getting into um, often that will help you uh, to not strip the holes and so I'm gonna put this cover back in there and remember when we took these off so these have two little uh, pins there. Pins go there. Just like that. Same thing with the other side. Two pins and the clips line up to two pinholes at the top. And there you go. So now, again, we're going to test the motion. Make sure nothing's... It's got full range of motion. Boom. We're ready to go. So now, again, like I said, you can wrap this up in a little tape. Oh, hello. I just dropped it. Hello. Take a little strip of tape. Uh, make yourself a little envelope, like so. Like, just like that. And now, now that you've got that all packaged up real nice, let, leave, leave yourself a little bit of um, adhesive at the top there. And what I do sometimes is, is stick it, you know, somewhere where it's not going to obstruct the battery. So the battery wiring is going to go there. US, uh, the USB port is right over here. Um, so I set it up so that it doesn't obstruct anything and then I'll show you where the, how the battery goes in. So battery goes in like such and you can see you know the screw is way out of out of the way and make sure that everything is is clearing. Da -da -da. All right, so you're good to go. And that's it. That's how you spring load your left joystick. All right, so that's it. You made it to the end of the video. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Um, if you have any comments or suggestions, uh, leave it in the comment section. <laughs> and uh, hey, um, like subscribe and share that'll that'll uh, help keep these uh these videos going and uh we'll see you in the next video